What's happening guys, it's Shane here. So we've all gotten spammed by these YouTube ads from gurus that made it rich and out of the kindness of their hearts, spam you relentlessly with ads trying to show you how you can become rich too. Is your New Year's resolution to lose weight? Is it to save an extra 500 bucks a month for your retirement? Is it to go on a purely vegan diet? Is it to stop using the f word? Well, I have news for you. Your New Year's resolutions f suck. Some of them want to show you how to make a Shopify store. 45 seconds, I'm gonna show you how my buddy Justin generates nearly $500,000 per month selling weird stuff like cat socks, fishing t-shirts, and of course, the legendary wolf mug of truth and justice. Others wanna show you how to start a real estate empire. Hey guys, Cody Sperber, the Clever Investor here. I'm with my son Hudson, and we're in Glendale, Arizona, standing in front of a house on Solano Drive that we just flipped and made $18 thousand dollars or maybe you're bored browsing YouTube one day and someone wants to show you how to get rich from cryptocurrency my name is Craig Grant this is my Bitcoin wallet 40 Bitcoin that I earned I didn't buy I earned this Bitcoin with a service called BitConnect and then my personal favorite is when an old friend that you haven't seen for years invites you out to coffee to tell you about a super amazing business idea that is definitely not a pyramid scheme. The more people that get involved, the more people who are investing, the more money we're all gonna make. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se, it's... Now, there's a ton of hype out there and there's a ton of gurus out there trying to sell you some course for $997 that's gonna teach you how to be rich. And what I want to do in this video is I want to break down the ones that are actually decent opportunities and then talk about the ones that are just complete scams and you're going to have a horrible time if you even try it. So the first one on the list is going to be MLMs or multi-level marketing. Now everybody knows that pyramid schemes are a scam. You know, they're illegal in the United States and several other countries. And if you get caught doing one, you could literally get sent to jail for 150 years. But what about multi-level marketing? I mean, after all, they are legal and they're compliant with the FTC. Well, technically, yes, they're legal. And if you ask any of these MLM companies, they'll throw all these statistics at you. And in their defense, uh, you know, it is very difficult to keep track of these statistics. But according to research by the FTC, 99% of MLM participants lose money. And let's talk quickly about a few things in this study. So it analyzed about 350 different MLM companies and it only included the ones that were confident enough to actually release data. So these were basically the best MLM companies. Now, a second thing about the study is the term liberal assumptions was mentioned over and over again when it came to the data, which basically means that whenever it wasn't clear or whenever the data seemed to go off in one direction, they always gave the MLM companies the benefit of the doubt. So they assumed the best for the MLM companies. So for instance, if the operating costs of a participant in an MLM company was a little bit unclear, the author would just assume that the operating costs were as low as possible. Despite all this, the study found that 99.12% of participants in MLMs lose money. Not that they don't make enough or anything like that, they straight up lose money. And the craziest thing I learned when I was doing my research for this video is that MLM companies actually have a worse track record than pyramid schemes. That's right, back in the day when pyramid schemes were legal, you actually had a better chance of being successful doing a pyramid scheme than you do if you get involved with an MLM company. So even though they're technically legal, it's still a horrible opportunity. And it really blows my mind how many different people fall for these. I mean, I knew a person who I consider to be basically a genius. I mean, she was a doctor and she started selling for an MLM company. I don't know how they trick people into doing it, but the bottom line here is MLMs are F tier, guys. Definitely, definitely going into F tier. If you go into an MLM, you're basically losing money and you would be better off in terms of just learning how business works by just starting a normal business on your own. Okay, second uh, <laughs> opportunity on the list is gonna be Amazon FBA. Okay, so this is a great one, guys. So basically what Amazon FBA is, it's fulfillment by Amazon. So you're basically a partner with Amazon and you would probably have manufacturers make products in China, they ship them to the Amazon warehouse, and then you do basically everything else. You do the uh, listing, you do the design on the product, all that sort of thing, and then people go on Amazon's website and they buy the product, and then you, know, you take your cut and they take their cut. You're basically a partner with Amazon. Now, 
when Amazon FBA first started, you know, a few years back, like let's say five years ago, Amazon FBA was probably a great opportunity. Uh, something that you would be really good to get into. But these days, your chances of being successful on Amazon FBA are incredibly low. So according to Marketplace Pulse, out of the 7,890,000 or so people who are selling on Amazon, only about 206,000 of them are doing $100,000 in sales. That's about 2.6% of the total sellers on Amazon, which I admit is better percentages than if you get involved in an MLM. Now, anybody who's done anything in the physical product business knows that profit margins are very, very low. Usually, if it's a good product, it'll be somewhere around 10 or 15% in profit margins. And that's after you consider everything on Amazon that you have to do, including marketing budget, pay-per-click, you know, buying the product from the manufacturer, shipping it, storage fees at the Amazon warehouse, the percentage cut that Amazon takes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So let's be really liberal in our assumptions here. Let's be nice and say that they are getting a 20% profit margin. These people that are making $100,000 in sales are getting a 20% profit margin on their sales on Amazon. That's about $20,000 a year in profit, which is just above the minimum wage in the United States of America. So the top guys, the top dogs, the 2.6%, the elites of Amazon, the total badasses on Amazon are making $20,000 a year, which is just above minimum wage. Now, I already know some people in the comments are gonna say, well, a lot of those sellers aren't active anymore, and they're gonna say, well, maybe some people have multiple stores and all that sort of thing. I get it. The, of course, these numbers are not gonna be completely accurate, but they can't be that far off. You know, I lived in Las Vegas and I actually knew a guy who sold over 10 million on Amazon and he told me, cause I was interested in it, to stay away from Amazon because when he started Amazon FBA, first of all, he started it right when it was at the beginning and he had a background in the physical product business. So he really, really knew what he was doing. And he told me all about some of the tactics that some of the successful sellers are using on Amazon and some of these tactics just blew my mind. I mean, let's not even talk about the fake reviews. I mean, Amazon has tons of fake reviews all over the place. And it's to the point where if you don't do fake reviews, you actually can't even compete. Some of the other tactics he told me about were how they would make multiple stores. So you'd make 10 or 15 different stores when you found a product you thought was good, and then you'd just flood the market with all those different stores to make it look like there were a ton of different people who were selling that product and it was saturated. When in reality, it was just one person selling the product with 15 different stores. And as you can imagine, opening up 15 different stores, well, you have to pay the monthly fee to Amazon. There's a lot of costs involved in that. It's not something where you can just buy like 500 or $1,000 worth of inventory and then you're good to go. There is a huge startup cost involved in opening 15 different stores. So a normal person probably isn't going to have the money in order to get involved in that. And therefore the normal person can't really compete. And on top of all of this, if that wasn't enough, let's say you defy the odds and you create a successful Amazon store. Amazon owns your data. They know what products you're selling. They know the keywords that are leading to that product being sold. They know the pictures that you used. They know what your sales are. They know which variations of the product are selling the best. They know everything and they own your data. So basically, once you've done all the hard work, all the grunt work of figuring out, you know, what sales copy does really well, what types of pictures do really well, Amazon can just go in there and just copy your product. They can make their own version of your product and then guess what, they have all the control. They can put their product at the top when somebody searches all of those keywords that you worked so hard to rank for. They'll put theirs over yours and they'll just absolutely crush your sales. And you really do not want to be competing with Amazon. I mean, we all know what Amazon does to their competitors. They absolutely destroy them. So all the gurus that are telling you, oh, you, all you need is $1,000 or you should go in credit card debt just to get started on Amazon. It's super easy. Anybody can do it. They are all full of shit. Still, with that being said, I have seen some people be successful on Amazon, so I have to be fair here. You know, it's much better than the stats when it comes to MLMs, for instance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put Amazon in C tier.
All right, so the next one on the list is going to be starting a traditional business. And I think we should be fair here and talk about what the success rate for a normal business or a traditional business is. And what I mean by that is like starting a plumbing company or an air conditioning business or a restaurant or an accounting firm, something that you see all over the place. Now there's all kinds of statistics and studies out there and you know they kind of group all the different businesses together, which I don't think is very fair. But basically what they say is about 70% of businesses fail within their first 10 years. And then out of the ones that do succeed, 10 to 20% of those are reasonably profitable. And by reasonably profitable, I mean you're probably making more than if you just got a normal job. You know, it's not a get rich quick sort of thing, but you're making a decent living and you're getting by. And statistics show that a good amount of people are actually successful doing this. You know, 30% of businesses are still around after 10 years. That's not bad at all. So I think this is a really good bar to set when you're thinking about the, you know, make money online opportunities. You know, Amazon, it's 2.6% to make a minimum wage. A traditional business is actually pretty good. Like after 10 years, 30% of them are still making enough to keep the business going. That's not bad at all. Now, the only problem with, you know, traditional businesses is they are pretty difficult to scale for the most part. And in a lot of cases, uh, businesses like this, you sort of reach a saturation point at some point where it's pretty difficult to increase your income. And so for that reason, I'm gonna put these in A tier. All right, so the next one on the list is cryptocurrency. And this is the one we've all been waiting for, right? And I admit, I have actually made money with cryptocurrency. I am net positive even after the market dropped, but I fully realize that I'm basically gambling with that money. And it's a very small part of a much bigger portfolio that I have in terms of investments. And I'm 100% aware that I could lose all of that money at some point and I'd be totally okay. I'm not afraid to lose that money. With that being said, I do have a pretty close friend who invested in Ethereum and Monero when they were around somewhere around one to five dollars. And I think we all know what happened to that. Ethereum got all the way up to like a thousand dollars and Monero got to several hundred. And he basically ended up getting rich from cryptocurrency. So I have seen this happening with my own eyes. I've seen people getting rich from this stuff. But with that being said, there's a ton of sketchy, scammy companies and and coins and blockchain and whatever you wanna call it out there. Take BitConnect for example, you know, they scammed thousands and thousands of people. There were people who posted videos on YouTube saying they were suicidal after it was found that BitConnect was a scam. You know, they held these giant lavish conferences. They made music videos to get people to buy it. And they had a very lucrative affiliate program going on, which attracted some amazing entrepreneurs like Craig Grant. Now, I'm still extremely skeptical about cryptocurrency. I think there's way too much hype. And my friend who got rich is also very skeptical. He took most of his money out of the market. So with that being said, crypto is gonna go in B tier because I still think it's a pretty bad option, but better than a lot of the other options on this list. So when you compare cryptocurrency to a lot of these other options, it's gotta go in B tier. Okay, so the next one on the list is gonna be startups that solve a real problem. And by that, I mean a company that solves a big problem or they make an existing service better. Think Uber, Venmo, think a lot of the companies that you see on Shark Tank, for instance. So it's not a traditional business like a plumbing company or something like that. Now, the success rates and statistics for companies like this, are they're really tough to see, but it's pretty widely accepted that nine out of 10 startups fail, and out of the 10% that's left, who knows how profitable they actually are, as about only 30% or so of successful businesses have over $100,000 in sales, which, as we talked about before, has nothing to do with profit. But like I said, it's really difficult to actually calculate this because a lot of these startups will actually get bought out by bigger businesses, which technically means they failed. So it's just very difficult to get accurate data because if you get bought out by a bigger business, that's actually a very good thing. So the point here is there's not that many that are successful, but the ones that are successful are really, really successful. A lot of the times these company founders will make $10 million, $100 million, 
or even more when they get bought out. Think PillPack getting bought out by Amazon for almost a billion dollars, for instance. On top of this, a lot of startups get funded by outside sources, and so there isn't as much risk involved and so if they fail, they can just try over and over and over again. There's really no such thing as something that you can reliably get rich quick from uh, without a ton of luck anyways, but this one is probably the one that comes closest to that. So for that reason, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in S tier. Okay, so coaching can be a little bit cringy. I mean, we all know the person whose life is an absolute dumpster fire that all of a sudden becomes a life coach or something like that. And they wanna try to teach you how to have a great life even though they don't have one themselves. Now, I've met hundreds if not thousands of different entrepreneurs and mentors and I spent a ton of time of different groups and masterminds and I even lived with a, in a house full of entrepreneurs. And I have to say that the one business model that I've seen the most average people find success with has got to be coaching and consulting. And they're very similar, but I'll explain the differences here in a minute. But quickly, let me explain what I mean by average. So average intelligence is not a business genius like Elon Musk. You know, they don't have a ton of business experience because if you had a ton of business experience, you wouldn't be average. You don't have some kind of unfair advantage, like they have a lot of money uh, coming in from their parents or they have some kind of investor in their family or one of their friends that's giving them a ton of money. They don't have another advantage like they're mentored by a world-class entrepreneur like freaking Tony Robbins or something like that. This is what I mean by average. You know, I've seen more average people become successful using this business model than any other one. So the differences between coaching and consulting basically means like what niche you're in. So if you're health, fitness, you know, mindset sort of niche, then you're probably gonna be a coach. And if you're in a business or information type niche, uh, then you're gonna be a consultant. But they both basically do the same thing, which is they identify a painful problem that a bunch of people in a particular group are having, and then they figure out how to solve that painful problem. A great example of this is uh, one of my favorite channels, which is DSLR Video Shooter and he basically teaches people how to use their cameras, how to make really good videos, and I bought one of his products because um, I just wanted to figure out how to use my camera that I got, and it was excellent. It was like a $15 product, and it taught me everything that I needed to know about using the camera, and the next camera that I get, I can almost guarantee you I'm gonna buy whatever product he comes out with for that camera. And this is a really great business model because you can do it without investing like $10,000 in in products or business infrastructure or anything like that. And then you can decide when you want to scale. You don't have to worry about inventory. And I've really seen a ton of average people become successful uh, using this business model, just teaching people how to do things that they're passionate about themselves. This one is definitely S tier. You're not actually gonna get rich quick. Nothing is guaranteed unless you get super, super lucky in terms of getting rich quick. But this one is pretty close to that. It's the one that's the closest and the most realistic. Next one on the list is going to be Shopify. Ah yes, you've probably seen the 300 different channels from 17 year old high school dropouts who are making $50,000 a month in their first month on Shopify. And being a 17 year old with the infinite wisdom and the kindness in their heart that they likely have with all those hormones coursing through their veins, they decide to teach everybody else how to do the same thing. So this is probably the hottest niche in e-commerce right now. I mean, so many people wanna become Shopify millionaires and it's just so attractive. I mean, think about it. A lot of people watching YouTube are probably introverts and you know, you just build up a quick store, you run some ads to it on Facebook, you sell a hot product, you don't even have to buy the product first and you can just live in your mom's basement forever just watching that money roll in and you don't have to learn social skills or interact with other human beings or any of that crap. I mean, this is just a dream business model for an introvert, right? But here's the problem, guys. Let's think about this logically for a second. Now, there isn't much hard data out there about the success rate of Shopify stores, but Reddit and YouTuber Rules for Rebels posted about how out of the 1,139 people that started a Shopify store using their affiliate link, 
only 2% still have an active store. And this was just after a few months of posting the affiliate link. So within a few months, 98% of them failed. Now, looking back at our baseline numbers for like a normal business, you know, 30% are still around after 10 years. So conservatively, let's say 1% of Shopify stores are still around after 10 years. Now, out of those that are still around, let's be really nice. Let's think back to the Amazon example. And let's say 10% of them are making $100,000 in sales. And then there's a 20% profit margin. Let's be really nice and let's say 20%. So they're making about $20,000 in profit. So if we're being really nice, you have about a 0.2% chance, conservatively speaking, of making $20,000 a year which is just above minimum wage. But let's just use a crazy extreme example here and say you get incredibly lucky, you find a product, you're selling a million dollars a year, that means you're making $200,000 a year. If you can build a store like that that doesn't require any personal branding or anything like that, you know, there's not like a personal brand, like a person who is selling the product. Anybody else out there can go and just copy your store and do the exact same thing. There's no barrier to entry. And think about this, when the supplier on Alibaba, the person who actually ships the product to whoever ordered it, sees that you're selling like 1,000 units a week, they're gonna look into it and they'll probably just cut you out completely after a few months and start selling the product themselves. And there's tons of software out there for this that allows people to figure out how much you're selling. And you know, someone on Amazon is gonna find out you're selling a crazy amount of this product and then they're gonna post it on their Amazon FBA, which is one to two day shipping versus the one to two week shipping of Shopify. And of course, Amazon is just gonna blow Shopify out of the water. So the thing about Shopify is it's usually like seasonal products or just products that got super hot all of a sudden because it's you know on a show or something like that. And after a few months, they just die. And so you'll start a store and if you get super, super lucky, it'll do well for a few months and then they'll usually just die. And even if you do happen to find a product that is good for years and years, someone is gonna use this fancy software, they're gonna find it, they're gonna copy your store and then they're just gonna blow you out of the water. Shopify might be the absolute worst business model on this list because at least with Amazon, if you do build a successful store, you have a brand that people can recognize, they can trust, and they can buy from that brand. And then you also have a ton of traffic on Amazon. So if your product goes out of style or Amazon kicks you off the platform, technically there's a ton of people who know your brand and you can just make your own store and your own website. But with Shopify, you don't really have a brand. It's just a quick web page that you're throwing up has an offer for a product that everybody else is also selling because everybody knows how to find products on Alibaba. So Shopify is basically like below F tier. It's basically like F minus tier, um, but I'm just gonna put it in F tier. It's the worst one on the list so far, except for maybe MLMs. MLMs might be a little bit worse, but it's, it's close, it's close. Okay, next on the list is going to be day trading, and this one is gonna get a ton of hate. I probably see 100 thumbnails a day with some guy smiling, sitting in front of a computer with a bunch of green and red graphs on it, claiming that he can teach you how to trade during the day and make a ton of money. Well, it's a well-known fact that about 90% of day traders lose money. Not that they don't make money, they actually end up losing money. Some studies say that it's even worse than 90%. Some say it's more like 95% or above. So you would be much better off just getting a minimum wage job. On top of this, you often have to pay whatever brokerage you're using fees in order to trade. And then even if you do have a successful trade, you know, you enter it like $1 and you exit at $10 or whatever it is, you have to pay what's known as short-term capital gains taxes, which is a lot more than if you held the stock for one year or more. Trading is also extremely time consuming and it takes a ton of skill to even be decent at. On top of that, you have to sit at a computer all day long monitoring real-time data with expensive software and then make extremely stressful decisions based on your assessments. You might make $5,000 before lunch and then you lose $10,000 before dinner. Then you go to the movies and you found out you lost another $5,000. Depression and anxiety is extremely common among day traders 
And there's a reason for that. And you could potentially get lucky here. And a lot of beginners do get lucky when they first start, but you have to know that that was just luck and you better get the heck out with whatever you won. Day trading is gonna go in D tier. Next one on the list is going to be penny stocks. Now, penny stocks is basically like day trading, but it's even worse. And the reason for this is because these small companies you're investing in when you buy penny stocks aren't as regulated as bigger companies. This means that the markets for these smaller companies are just full of manipulation and shady tactics. There's lots of pump and dump schemes. There's fake media campaigns for these small companies. So many different shady tactics are used to make you think that there's some hot stock that's about to go from two cents to $5 and make you rich. Penny stock trading has even worse stats than day trading and I think it easily deserves to be in F tier. That's right, penny stocks go in F tier right there with MLMs, Shopify. I really can't decide which one is the worst. All right, next one on the list is going to be a service-based online business. And usually this is going to be what's known as a middleman business. So what I mean by this is you find something that a ton of people are doing, like creating websites for their businesses and then you get really good at that. So there's something that a ton of people are doing and you get really good at it and you basically find a bunch of people that want the service that you are offering. You know, creating a really effective website is not easy to do and a lot of people want to outsource that rather than, you know, take the hundreds of hours it would take in order to learn how to use WordPress, for instance. So a friend of mine got into website design and development like this, and he found a really good service that basically they would design six different websites for your client based on their needs, and then do all of the development and backend stuff after they've chosen their favorite design. And they would charge about $500 for each step of the process. So $500 to create six different website designs, you'd show all six to your client, and then they'd choose one of them, and then they'd charge another $500 or so, I think it was actually a little less, in order to actually create that website, do the development and the backend stuff on the website itself. And these websites were excellent. We're talking like awesome A++ tier maybe even S tier level websites. And a lot of people around the country would pay $5,000 to $10,000 to have these done professionally. So my friend did this and it was a successful business for years and years. And he was basically just the middleman. He found a really awesome service that did amazing work. I'm sure there's tons of services out there that don't do amazing work, but he found the one that was really good. And then he basically was just the middleman between this amazing service and all the people that wanted the amazing service. So he just did the marketing and stuff. Another friend of mine did a very similar thing with search engine optimization, which is basically the process of showing up really high when someone searches a particular phrase or term on Google. And if it's a big enough niche, you can just cut out the supplier, hire your own employees and complete the service yourself. But the great thing is, is you don't have to do it in that backwards order where you hire people not knowing whether you can actually you know, get a bunch of people to pay for it. You can just be a middleman, you know, validate that there is a ton of people in the market willing to pay for this service, and then you start your own business. Now, don't get me wrong, your chances of success are still pretty low here. You probably won't get rich quick from this, but this is definitely one of the better ones that I've seen, and for that reason, I think I'm gonna have to put this one in A tier. Okay, so the next one on the list is going to be digital marketing, and this one was popularized by our good friend Ty Lopez when he opened his social media marketing agency course and took YouTube by storm. And this definitely was a really good, huge opportunity, you know, five years back or so, maybe even like eight years back or so, when Facebook first started doing their ads and a lot of people were getting really good with the ads and they were teaching others how to do it themselves. And then businesses started uh, wanting people who had this skill set. And as a you know a normal business, it's just simply unfair. You got an unfair advantage if your social media game is on point. You drive a bunch of people to your restaurant or whatever your business is, and that gives you a huge advantage over all of the other businesses in the area. However, you know, this social media marketing thing is extremely oversaturated at this point. 
and business owners are very, very tired of working with people that give mediocre or bad results. So if you start a business like this, they probably don't wanna work with you unless you have a track record, a proven track record of you know making other people's businesses more successful because there's just tons of people out there that have zero experience and they just think they know how to do everything when they're actually really bad at it. It's also extremely time consuming and you have to deal with your clients all day long. Like, they might not like one little thing about this ad that you created. And so you have to start the whole thing over and just like scrap it and create an entirely new one. And you know, you might send them a form with information that you need to know in order to run an ad. And then they take like a week and a half in order to fill out the form. And then they get mad at you when they're not getting results. Well, you took forever to fill out the form. I couldn't get you results. You know, they might call you or text you late at night and they're expecting you to get back to them. It just gets a little bit ridiculous and it's a pain. Also, let's say you do get really good at doing Facebook ads. Well, a few months later, Facebook will come out with an update. They'll switch everything around for no reason whatsoever. And then all of a sudden your ads aren't working anymore. They change the algorithm or they change something like that. Your ads aren't working and you also need to relearn the entire interface because they changed everything around. They've done this over and over again. And you have to drop everything you're doing and fix that because if you don't fix it within a few days, your clients are gonna drop you just like that. So anyways, this is a legitimate business model that does solve problems that businesses are having right now. It's just really tough to break into. So for that reason, I'm probably gonna give this B tier status. All right, next on the list is this no money down real estate that I keep seeing here on YouTube. Now, real estate historically is a fantastic investment. In my opinion, it's one of the two best long-term investments that you can make, you know, and after 2008, you know, the crash around 2011 or so, a bunch of people got extremely rich investing in housing. And because of that, a ton of YouTube channels started they were trying to teach other people how to get rich investing in real estate as well. And like I said, for a long-term investment, if you know what you're doing, real estate is great. It is amazing. If you get a good deal, you are just, you're going to be set. But short term, it's a very mediocre investment. And, you know, almost 70% of millennials regret investing in real estate, for instance. Now, some people on YouTube say that you can invest in real estate with no money down. And in my opinion, anybody who says this is wrong. You need money to make money. And from everybody I've talked to in my experience, no money down real estate is a bad idea. You know, different areas of the country are also much better for investing. Some areas are pretty bad and then some areas are absolutely amazing. It's also a ton of work. If your tenant's washer breaks down, you gotta go fix that in the middle of the night sometimes, or you gotta go get a new one. And so a lot of people end up hiring a property manager, but of course, when you hire a property manager, that means you're not making as much from your investment. So I really think it's a better idea to buy houses wherever you're living, assuming that the place that you live is a place where investing in real estate is profitable, and then just manage the tenants yourself. But then you have to deal with background checks, late night calls to fix stuff, tenants trashing your property, all sorts of other things that are not fun and take up a lot of your time. So basically, real estate is a great investment and a great opportunity. It's a ton of work and you can get rich slowly from it, but it's definitely not a get rich quick scheme like a lot of these YouTubers make it sound. It might have been pretty close to that back in 2011, but the housing market has recovered and it's not like that anymore. So for those reasons, I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in A tier. All right, so next on the list is becoming an influencer. So what do I mean by this? I mean starting a YouTube channel, starting an Instagram page, something like this. You know, Gary Vee talks about this all the time. You need to be creating content every single day. You need to be putting out as much content as possible. So there's a ton of cringy courses out there trying to teach you to start a YouTube channel or a blog or an Instagram or something like that. And there's a ton of snake oil salesmen that will tell you you can make a ton of money with a small channel within a month. It's not true. It's just not true. You know, they'll use examples like Janelle Eliana, who grew ridiculously fast and got like a million subscribers in a, in a month or something like that. But that is seriously like winning the lottery. That almost never happens. Now, if you're willing to work really hard for like three years and you're really smart about the type of channel that you make, this can be an incredible opportunity. I mean, YouTube hasn't been around for long and this is one of the only times in human history where 
you know, you can go from an absolute nobody, you can choose yourself instead of having to be chosen by somebody else and then create your own destiny and, you know, build your own business. You know, other times in history, you would have to be chosen by somebody or maybe get really lucky or be born into a rich family in order to do something like this. And you can basically make a living just talking about whatever you're passionate about and helping a lot of people at the same time. And I think that's pretty cool. This one is a great opportunity, but if you think you're gonna get rich overnight, you're wrong. It'll probably take like a thousand days and tons of hard work. Then you might be able to make a good living on YouTube or one of the other social media platforms. But with that being said, I am going to go ahead and put this one in S tier. The next one on the list is the lottery. And speaking of getting lucky, let's talk about winning the lottery. You know, I'm pretty sure that you all know this, but your chances of winning the lottery are extremely low. We're talking about one in 14 million or somewhere around there. And you can probably tell that those are pretty bad odds and you'd be better off just keeping your money for yourself or investing it or basically doing anything other than that. Still, if you type in how to win the lottery on Google, there are people that claim that they have a six step system for winning the lottery. I mean, I can't even make this stuff up. It's that ridiculous. For every get rich quick scheme or thing out there, there's always some fake guru trying to sell you the secret method to get into it and get rich quick. This one is clearly F tier, guys. You're basically just wasting your money if you do this. I mean, if you want to do it just for the, you know, shits and giggles just as fun, that's one thing. But in terms of getting rich quick, this one is awful. It's F tier. All right. So. The next one on the list is pretty great. You know, we've talked about becoming a consultant or an influencer, and those are legitimate business models you can make money from. Unfortunately, this is a relatively new industry with all the technology we have. It's only been around for about a decade. And because of that, it's pretty unregulated. And anyone can claim basically anything package it up in a $997 course and sell it. And I've made some videos about this, but I would estimate about 80 to 90% of the courses out there are just complete scams and you definitely should not buy them. With that being said, that doesn't mean that all of e-learning and the information product business is a scam. I think that e-learning and information products can change the world and accelerate human learning in the same way that books did thousands of years ago. Still at this point in this relatively new market, there are a ton of fake gurus out there that will sell you a course promising the world and then delivering absolutely nothing. In fact, a lot of these courses are designed to have you fail so that you will buy whatever the next upsell is. And I think in the next decade, this particular market is gonna turn around for the better Consumers are going to get smart about this. They're going to realize that a lot of these guys are charlatans and anybody that offers a course that doesn't get a reasonable amount of people's success is just going to get totally wiped out. And there's also a good chance that the FTC is going to regulate the market as well. But hopefully it will become just like any other market where there's mostly good people who are just great you know, entrepreneurs trying to make the world a better place. And then of course, there's always going to be a few apples. Any market is gonna have a few bad apples. But for now, as long as you lack empathy and you have no problem scamming a ton of people and ruining lives, and you can still look in the mirror at yourself at the end of the day and respect yourself, then this is probably the best possible business model for you. This one is definitely gonna go in S tier. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching the video. Go ahead, uh, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and then check out my other videos right here because I made them just for you. Have a good one and bye for now.